Mike Page from Fargary here. I just got back last week from the annual eight ball championship event uh, for the Western BCA at the Oregon coast. And I want briefly to analyze some major changes that happened this year with the introduction of Fargo ratings. Uh, but a shout out right now to this all volunteer board of directors who really put on a fantastic event and work hard with uh, bad boys productions and with CSI for online registration and with uh, uh, Kevin and Sherry Ross Railbirds for, for streaming. Uh, wow. What a great event. Here's the old way of do, doing things. Men separated from women and then within each sex separated into three different divisions. Some of the divisions are very small. Women's master, grandmaster is the same handful of people playing year after year. The men's B and the men's A are much larger divisions and each has a group of higher level players that don't quite belong in the division end up going home with a lot of the money and, the, and an average B or A player just doesn't have a lot of chance of, of cashing. Here's the new approach. This is, it's a significant change. Everybody is listed by Fargo ratings, all thousand or so players, and an elite division is separated off, off at the top. And then there's something like 900 players left Divided into six divisions, platinum, gold, silver one, silver two, bronze one, bronze two is about 150 players each. And the players within each division don't differ a lot by Fargo rating. We want to analyze how this went and what's the equivalent of the rubber hitting the road? What's, what's the bottom line when it comes to analyzing a pool tournament? Well, it's who finished in the money. So it's not that these tournaments are all about money, but if there's a problem, you'll see it in terms of who finished in the money. So we're going to analyze things by looking at charts that look like this one. This is a, a pie chart. That the entire circle represents all of the players, and they're divvied into those who finished not in the money and those who finished in the money. Now, about 31% of the players finished in the money, and that's by design. So there's no real information here. The information comes when we divvy this big circle of players into a couple of smaller circles. So suppose there's a problem with the ratings generally or a problem with the way we divvied players into different divisions by rating. How would it manifest? What would it look like? Well, if we divvy that big circle of players into two different groups, group A and group B, and made them two different circles, a problem would smack us in the face. Just like this, the big circle is divvied into two smaller circles, group A and group B, and they don't have to be the same size. They can have different numbers of people. But what we're looking for is something like this, where the fraction of people in group A that finished in the money differs substantially from the fraction of people in group B. This is what a problem looks like. So what we're going to do is divvy up people in different ways looking for problems. We'll look at three different ways to divvy up the players. The first is geography. Do players from Washington perform better or worse than players from Oregon, which is essentially asking, do the ratings match up? Uh, the second is looking at players with established Fargo ratings versus players who have who are playing by ratings that are largely influenced by starter ratings. And the third is male versus female. Here's the first comparison, a geographic one. The circle on the left represents all of the players in the tournament from the state of Washington. The circle on the right is players from the state of Oregon. And as you can see, it's about the same number. I think it's 32% from both states that finished in the money. So that's a good thing. If we look at Idaho and British Columbia, smaller number, if we add them together, uh, it's like 28%. So things are on track there. Next, we look at whether players have established Fargo ratings. So this line, all the way on the left is the, is the people with the most games in the Fargo rate system. All the way on the right is people with no games in the Fargo rate system. The blue part is everybody with 200 or more games in the system when we say they have established Fargo ratings. The people all the way on the right in green have no games in the system, and they play by just a guess that we call a starter rating. The people in purple are somewhere in between. They have ratings that are still influenced by a starter guess, but they have some games in the system, so they have a performance rating. We want to divvy the entire group of players into two groups, not three. So what we do is draw a red line in the middle of that purple group, and the players to the left of that red line have 100 or more games in the Fargo rate system, and their rating that they play at is more determined by performance than it is by a starter guess. And the people to the right of that red line, their rating is more determined, they either have just a starter guess or more determined by 
a starter gas than it is by actual performance. Here's the results. The players on the left, whose rating is based entirely or mostly on performance, cash to a significantly higher degree than the players on the right, whose rating is based entirely or, or uh, mostly on a starter guess. Some people see this as a good thing. The idea is that the players on the left are the lifeblood of the organization. They've been supporting the organization. Uh, they've been in the system for a long time. And it's like protecting the house, so to speak. Here's the opposing point of view. The players on the right are the lifeblood of growth in the organization. So even when Fargo ratings are fully entrenched, you're going to have new players every year if it's a healthy organization, and you want to treat those new players fairly. So maybe the best thing to do is to aim to make starter ratings or starter guesses that are as accurate as you can to get these uh, pie slices as close as possible. All right, so what about the next comparison, uh, sex, male versus female? A lot of the females that are playing have established their Fargo ratings by playing in the past against only other females. So uh, there's sometimes a fear that maybe those Fargo ratings don't mesh up with those of, of males. And here's the results. It's generally not the case that females differ significantly from males in terms of the proportion that cashed in this event. Sure, as you can see here, the proportion of females that cashed is slightly smaller than the proportion of males that cashed, but they're pretty close. Um, on top of this, there's 17,000 new games that have gone into the system after doing this analysis. That couples males and females together even better, and it couples geographic regions together even better, and gets more and more people established. I want to thank Western BCA for inviting me to this event and hosting me while I was there. Uh, I had a good time, and I met with a lot of people and talked to a lot of people. I had a big room full of people for a Fargo rate session with lots of good questions. If you're from someplace else and you're thinking, wow, this looks like a great event, I'll put it on my bucket list. Well, you're out of luck because this event is limited to Western BCA members who play pool league in the Western BCA. But people should see the Western BCA as a great model for a regional organization who have worked hard and shown courage doing new things for the players. All 4,000 members of the Western BCA will be switching to Fargo Rate LMS for as league management software. And this allows games play to go into the system the next day. So everybody will get that much more coupled together and, and will work toward getting established ratings. Some people think that the goal is to have all of the players have established ratings, and that's not really the case. Think about it. Uh, there are new players, and every year there are new players entering the system who are not going to have established ratings. And if it's a healthy organization with a healthy fraction of new players, then there's always going to be players without established ratings. That's what it means to have a healthy organization that is growing and prospering.